I was very disturbed last week when I heard the Justice Minister Delroy Chuck saying that a parliamentary committee formed to review uh, sexual offenses refused to make a recommendation on forced anal penetration for fear of it being interpreted as an attempt to overturn the Bugri law. Listen to what he said. It was posited that forced anal penetration should be made a criminal offense akin to vaginal penetration with a commensurate penalty. An examination of the legislative authorities revealed, however, that any amendment to that effect could be construed as an implied repeal of the offense of buggery. Accordingly, Mr. Speaker, it was determined that the committee did not have the power to effect that amendment or to recommend it, and the matter should properly be considered by Parliament. Mr. Speaker, this government has given its commitment to invoking a referendum on the matter. I don't know if you're fully understanding what is going on here. I I want you to truly understand what he's saying. This parliamentary committee, which, by the way, was only being asked to make recommendations about the law because clearly they don't have the power to change the law at that level, at the parliamentary committee level. This committee refused to recommend a provision that would help to protect our boys because they're afraid that it would somehow be seen as supporting buggery. Do you understand the illogic of that position? Under our law, a man or a boy cannot be raped. Only girls and women can be raped because of the way that rape is defined in our laws. So first of all, part two of the rape, grievous sexual assault and marital rape, it says, a man commits the offense of rape if he has sexual intercourse with a woman without the woman's woman's consent and knowing that the woman does not consent to sexual intercourse or recklessly not caring whether the woman consents or not. So first of all, the first obvious problem with that is that it assumes that only a man can rape a woman. And that assumption is repeated further in the definition of sexual intercourse, which says in the law, sexual intercourse means the penetration of the vagina of one person by the penis of another person. So again, it assumes only a man can rape a woman in this specific way. And the punishment now, it says a person who commits the offense of rape is liable on conviction in a circuit court to imprisonment for life or such other term as the court considers appropriate, not being less than 15 years. So obviously, this doesn't cover a multitude of situations, such as a female raping a female, most likely with an object or another body part, which is covered under grievous sexual assault, which is another thing we'll get to. It doesn't cover a female raping a male. And no, he does not have to enjoy it just because it's a woman offering him sex. I've said time and time again, rape is not about sex, but about power. And it's a violent act. It also doesn't cover, like I was saying, a male raping a male, which also is covered under grievous sexual assault as well as bug rape. But there are challenges with that, and I'm coming to that. Mm-hmm. So grievous sexual assault, it says a person commits this offense wherein the circumstances specified, the offender penetrates the vagina or anus of the victim with a body part other than the penis. And it goes on to, you know, to to describe what all it covers. And the punishment for that is a term not exceeding three years. Not exceeding three years. Uh, It says, on conviction in a circuit court... uh, Okay, that's in the resident magistrate's court. The punishment does not exceed three years. And then if it goes to the circuit court, the punishment should be not less than 15 years. Mm -hmm. But if you are listening carefully, you'd realize that the definition of grievous sexual assault would apply if a male was forcibly penetrated by an object or is forced to give or receive oral sex. It doesn't apply if a male is forcibly penetrated by a penis. For that, we turn to the offense of buggery, which is uh, in an entirely different act, the Offenses Against the Person Act. And it says, whoever shall be convicted of the abominable crime of buggery committed either with mankind or with any animal shall be liable to be imprisoned and kept to hard labor for a term not exceeding 10 years. So obviously, something is missing. 
no differentiation is made between whether the act of buggery is consensual or forcible. That's one. With an animal or a person. <laughs> With an animal or a person. But, but because there's no differentiation between whether the act is consensual or forcible, that means there is no provision for male rape. Yeah? And as you heard earlier, it's not covered under the Sexual Offenses Act either. You can treat these two things as you can't treat these two things as the same. You would have also noticed that the punishment for buggery under which quote unquote male rape falls carries a significantly lesser penalty than that of rape because only a woman can be raped. Female rape. Let's call it that just for Mm -hmm. the purposes of this conversation. So based on everything I presented to you, a man can get up to life in prison for raping a woman. But that same man can only get a maximum of seven years in prison for raping a man or a boy. How is this fair? Is raping a girl or a woman somehow worse than raping a boy or a man? You'd think that in the Jamaican context, many Jamaicans would argue the opposite, that the crime against the boy is worse. So I'm very baffled to hear that a parliamentary committee with some power to do something to make recommendations to fix that has taken the cowardly approach and decided not to recommend the protection of our boys. This is allowing our own homophobia to, in a very stupid way, prevent us from protecting our boys. Now, ironically, one of the the advocates for uh, changing these provisions is J Flag. Yeah. <laughs> Associate Director of Program and Advocacy for J Flag, Glenroy Murray, was on this program last week, week making the point, which is ironic because J Flag is always accused of pushing this gay agenda mm-hmm. and wanting to hold turn the whole world gay, blah blah blah. But here is J Flag advocating for the protection of our boys and men from forced anal penetration, while our parliamentary committee says, no, let's not touch that issue right now. So here's what Mr. Mori said. By preserving the Bogle law, you had to create a different offense called cruiser sexual assault that does not necessarily capture all of the possible forms of sexual assault within the act equally. So, for example, incest can only happen when there's sexual intercourse, which means it can only happen when there's vaginal penetration. It can only happen between people of different sex. So a father cannot be charged with incest with his son. And so there are all these things that make no sense, but because of the preservation of Bogri, the entire scheme of sexual offenses is a bit pitchy-patchy. If a man uh, sexually assaults a child anally with his finger, he can get that massive penalty that comes with that offense. But if he uses his penis, it would not apply because then it would be buggery. So all of these wow. hmm. inconsistencies are a result of this protection of a symbolic law. And I say symbolic because statistically it doesn't have the impact of preventing gay men from having sex with each other. So you're keeping the symbolic law but hurting everyone else that... It's supposed to be protecting. That position coming from J Flag. Yeah. So like I said, this issue of buggery has been turning many people into fools because you you you're lacking the sight, the foresight to see what you are actually doing is keeping our vote boys and our men in this vulnerable state, keeping them unprotected, all because you want to preserve this particular law in the way that it currently is. And I say, yes, that parliamentary committee was cowardly. And I'm very, very disappointed in them choosing not to make that recommendation. That's what's on my mind.